I'm going to share with you a short mini Melrad mobility session that you can follow along with at home. All you're going to need is a mat. mobility session is so much more than just mobility. Really what we're doing in our Melrad mobility sessions is a catch-all session that addresses strength, mobility, stability, and flexibility all in one. Because really, even though a lot of us look at mobility as a combination of these four qualities, the, the real definition of mobility is movement across a joint. So, in this class, we're going to do lots of work that is addressing movement across a variety of joints, sometimes more than one joint at a time. But really what we're trying to do is encourage the, the body to function better as a whole. Incorporating work that addresses all these requirements of a really athletic body. Flexibility, stability, mobility, and strength all at once is just a great restorative session that will allow you to just feel that much better when you're participating in your sport. So as I said, you're not gonna need anything other than a mat for this session. And what I would say for all of these exercises is we want to gently encourage the body to access these shapes. So my advice to anybody that's doing this class is, one, make sure that your doctor is okay with you doing it. And number two, when you're in this class, it's not a competition. Your body is more likely to accept this work if you turn down the dial a little bit and make sure that the sensation that you're feeling in any of these stretches, shapes, exercises, or, or strength movements is somewhere between a four and a six out of 10. What you'll find is that being more gentle with this work is gonna be the fastest way to improvement. So let's get to it. The first exercise we're gonna start with is hip internal rotation with a single leg. In this exercise, you're gonna to wanna to lay on, the, on your stomach on the floor and have your knee about five or six centimeters away from the wall with enough room that you can dorsiflex your toes and have them touching the wall. And then you're just gonna lay your forehead onto your hands um, and have your, have your knees about hip width apart. Then when you're doing this exercise, what you're gonna do is you're going to slowly walk that toe down the wall and to the outside while you're keeping both your knee and your thigh glued to the floor. Make sure that you are, move really slowly, go down to what feels like a four or six out of 10, and then have a brief pause there before you come back up. Now this exercise is excellent uh, because having internal rotation at the hips protects the knees. Uh, your hip can ab absorb rotation and change of direction if they, if they have some room to actually internally rotate. Uh, and if they don't, then what happens is your knees end up absorbing that change of direction. The next exercise is cat camel. And so you want to start this in a tabletop position. And it's nice to have your thumbs facing forward with your hands spread to the outside. It helps you to bring your shoulders down and back and away from your ears. Inhale, you're going to lift your sit bones up, press your chest out and allow your belly to sink down. And then you're going to exhale, round your spine, press your belly upwards and tuck the tailbone in. Our next exercise is the long adductor stretch. So to do this stretch, you're gonna put one knee down, in this case, it's my right knee, and then I'm gonna send my left leg out to the side. So you, what you wanna have is a nice straight spine, send that leg out to the side, and then just slowly rock back uh, over that right knee. Now, if you can see, my right foot is kind of pointed in a little bit, and this is pretty important to, um, to get the correct stretch through your, through your adductor. Um, and what you don't wanna do is round your back down because that basically takes the stretch out of your adductor. So keep your spine straight, 
just rock back to where you can feel that adductor engaging. So here we have the short adductor stretch. I'm gonna turn my left hip out, put my left foot on the ground perpendicular to my right hip, and then putting weight into that left foot, I'm gonna just rock out over that knee. So I go from 90 degrees, pushing out over that knee. And this stretch, you should feel a little bit higher up in your adductors. Stretching the adductors is excellent for a, accessing good pelvic alignment. So especially for triathletes that have hip flexors that need to be at two different lengths for two different sports between cycling and running, this is an excellent stretch to keep you healthy. This next exercise is called the greatest stretch and it truly is the greatest stretch. So in this one, what we're doing is we're starting in a high plank and then we're bringing uh, one foot up beside our hand and then with our hands to the inside of that lead leg, we're just turning and rotating through the thoracic spine to look out before coming back down, come back into a high plank and then switch legs. This is just a great dynamic mobility exercise that gets into the hips, it gets through your thoracic spine, there's a lot of work in your lower legs, um, and there, there's really good mobility through your hips to bring that foot up beside your hands. So that's just a fantastic exercise, even just as a warm up for, for running. And so the second thing I'm going to show you is that if you do struggle to bring that foot up beside your hands, you can make this exercise a little bit easier by propping your hands up a little bit higher. So you can either use yoga blocks or as I'm using in this example, just a couple of dumbbells to lift your hands maybe one or two inches off the ground. And as you can see, when I have my hands a little bit higher, I really have way more room to rotate through my thoracic spine. So that might be an option if you have some blocks or some dumbbells to help prop yourself up a little bit. This next exercise is familiar to the yogis in the crowd. So this is basically just a, a flow between a high plank into that downward dog position. And as you can see, I'm trying to find just the right spot with my feet the right distance apart where I can push back, really stretching through those calves, um, going from a nice straight spine, lifting my hips up into the air, dropping my head between my shoulder blades, but, but pulling those shoulder blades back and away from my head. And as you can see, my thumbs here are facing forward. This position where you have thumbs forward and your elbows kind of rotated in and towards the front is a really good uh, starting position for getting into and, and stretching out those scapulas. So um, that's probably what I would start with uh, for that high plank. The next exercise is a three-way lunge. You wanna start with your feet shoulder width apart. You wanna step forward, bend until your knees at 90 degrees, um, and then step back in, and then step out to the side. Weight is in your standing leg, and you send your butt back. And then finally, you wanna just step backwards. Again, knees to 90 degrees, and then come back up. The deep squat with rotation, it can be a hard exercise for athletes that don't have access to a low squat. Um, so you just wanna do this exercise as best as you can. So you might need to prop your heels up if you can't get into a low squat position. 
uh, with, the, with your heels on the ground where you're stable and can turn. But if you can, what you're doing is you're just coming down into a nice low squat and then slowly turning and looking over your shoulder as you, as you work into that, those hips from that low squat position. Okay, our four-way shoulders is a really great strengthening exercise to get into uh, all the muscles in your rotator cuff. Starting in the Y, with our thumbs up, we're gonna basically go up and out to the side. And we'll just do 10 like that. So up and out to the side in the Y position. So the entire time you're doing this exercise, you're pulling your shoulders away from your ears and squeezing a pencil between your shoulder blades behind you. And then the T position, we have our thumbs headed back, straight back behind us. Again, squeezing our shoulders away from our ears and back behind. And then the L position, we bring our elbows up even with our shoulders and then straighten our arms out to the side. Again, really fight to squeeze that pencil between your shoulder blades. And then finding, finally the W, we have our thumbs up and we're rotating our elbows around that axis up and back. And again, you wanna really fight to squeeze a pencil between your shoulder blades while you're doing this one. As you can see, it's really hard for me to even get my shoulders together because this is a real weakness for me. So, um, we're really fighting to keep our elbows at the same level as our shoulders and then really pull those scapulas together um, behind you and, and work the back of your shoulders. I hope you really enjoyed this video and found this workout really helpful. There's more strength and conditioning activation and drills videos available in coaching on demand at melrad.com. Thanks for visiting my channel and please subscribe. See you next time.